Let's call the meeting to order. Thank you for coming, and I want to introduce Bill Burton at this point and let him tell a little bit about uh, postcard history that he's associated with. Thank you. Anyway, um, my name is Bill Burton. I know a great many of you, but probably not everybody. Uh, I am the publisher of uh, a free online magazine called postcardhistory.net. Um, the real brains of the operation, however, is also on this call. His name is Ray Hahn. And he's the editor. Um, the distinction between an editor and a publisher is the publisher um, cleans the toilets and sweeps the, the uh, floor, and Ray does all the, the fun stuff and the intellectual work. So between us, um, we've been going since uh, late May of uh, 2020, and we've really had a, a, great, uh, a, a great run, and we're still going at it. So this is just another extension of, of uh, what we're finding with, with uh, the publication of articles about postcards, and I hope everybody enjoys it. Thank you. Uh, okay, I think um, uh, we've introduced everyone, and thank you for coming. And I'm going to uh, now uh, introduce our speaker today. It's Tom Mulvaney. I used to say East Helena, Montana, and that's true. And he and his wife have a home in uh, Mesa, Arizona, and that's true also. There's they're, they're uh, snowbirds, and right now they're in. Uh, in Arizona warming up, I guess. It's always warm there, or it seems like maybe. Uh, in any case, we're delighted to have Tom. He's a, uh, uh, a fixture at the Wichita Postcard Shows every year. He's been coming for years and years and years, and uh, always fun, always smiling, uh, happy, uh, a font of knowledge, and we look forward to hearing from him today about his uh, topic, which is the Big Bang of United States Postcard Clubs. Tom? Hello, everybody. Um, thanks for having me as your speaker this month, Wichita Postcard Club. Um, Alan Peterson, sorry for the loss of your sister. Everybody here, unless they got on the wrong link, is probably a postcard collector and probably belongs to the Wichita Postcard Club. Postcard clubs is the focus of my talk today, but don't worry, uh, we're going to be showing you a lot of good postcards, including a series of postcards from what was probably the very first postcard club in the United States. I discovered these cards about 30 years ago, and I've been intrigued with them ever since. And so I think you will find them interesting also. Let's talk about postcard clubs just briefly. Um, what does a club exist for? Well, it exists to benefit the postcard collectors that make up that postcard club. We have postcard meetings, usually once a month, um, up until this past year when the pandemic hit. Some clubs have been fortunate enough to have the technical expertise to bring us um, Zoom meetings, not too many clubs can do that, but some do, Wichita Club, of course, being one of them. Uh, in addition to meetings, uh, newsletters. We, I've always enjoyed receiving that newsletter from the two or three clubs that I've been a member of over the years. And again, more recently with technology uh, evolving, we now have a number of clubs putting out online newsletters. Uh, hats off to Phil McDaniels for our club here in Wichita. He does a great job. Good job, Phil. Newsletters, meetings, but oh, I can't leave out that biggie, that October show in Wichita every year. A lot of postcard clubs do sponsor a show uh, usually once a year. 
where dealers come and uh, buy and sell postcards. Now there's some additional benefits that not all clubs offer, but I'm going to use our club as an example. Here's some extra things we get from the Wichita Postcard Club. Club issued postcards. We get at this point in time, three Rick Gary postcards every year. And we'll talk and show you a few of those later on in the talk. Um, membership rosters, not all clubs do that, but Wichita does. Show programs. And more recently, um, How Out Away has worked with Alan Milbrandt, our webmaster, to produce the postcard of the week features which are really fun to watch. If you haven't done so, they're stored out on YouTube. So check them out. And then of course, it's been difficult to have meetings the past year with the pandemic. And so um, a few fortunate clubs um, are having meetings online. And so these monthly Zoom meetings are another added attraction uh, from our Wichita Postcard Club. So I want to give you a couple of definitions on the top here, and then we'll proceed. When I talk about postcard clubs, almost every postcard club that you can think of is what we call a local postcard club. That is, it's centralized in some, usually a bigger, bigger city or it may be a, an area of the state, a certain area, but they're, they're localized and that allows them to have club meetings and get together for, for, for talks um, and hopefully have a show. Another type of postcard club is what I would call a national postcard club. And in the history of our postcard clubs in the United States, the first basically major postcard club was a national postcard club. In other words, it catered to the whole country. Uh, it was based out of Los Angeles for the most part of its existence, but it did not have meetings. It did not put on a show, but what it did do and what it did do very well for two things. One, it put out a newsletter. And we're going to take a look at just a few sample pages from some of the newsletters that this club put out. The name of the club, the Postcard Collectors Club of America. Started out in 1934 in Kansas City, Missouri. Um, later moved to Los Angeles and finally ceased operations in 1959. We'll go into a little more detail on that. But the Postcard Club of America was that first club that got the postcard hobby excited uh, starting in the 30s and 40s and carrying on into the 50s. Okay, since this is partly a, a history talk, we have to have a quiz. So everybody ready? Here's four or five questions. Just see what you come up with in your mind and then we'll see how you did. What year did the Wichita Postcard Club start? What year did the first local postcard club start and what was that club? Which club is the active most active most longest running club in the United States. Once that first local club started, how long did it take for other clubs to come into being? And about how many postcard clubs are there in the United States? This brings us to the title of our talk today the Big Bang of US Postcards. So, quick answers to those questions. Wichita Postcard Club started in 1977. The 
first national postcard club I mentioned was the Postcard Collectors Club of America started in 1934. The first local postcard club was either the Cleveland Postcard Club or the Metropolitan Postcard Club of New York, 1946. The Metropolitan Postcard Club is active today. So it has the distinction of being the longest running postcard club in the US. How long did it take other clubs to start up once 1946 occurred and we had the Cleveland Postcard Club and the Metropolitan Postcard Club? Not long. We had a big uh, formation of postcard clubs across the country. And so over the next few years, we had probably close to 30 postcard clubs that came into being. Hence the name of my talk, the Big Bang of Postcard Clubs. How many postcard clubs today? I don't know. At one time, according to Lou Bear, and many of you will know about Lou, he's the postcard historian from the San Francisco Bay Postcard Club. Lou estimates that in the 80s and 90s, there, there were well over 100 postcard clubs in operation. Today, there are far fewer. Um, I don't know of an active a listing of the active postcard clubs. Uh, maybe somebody knows about that, but you know what, 40, 50, 60, somewhere in that neighborhood today. How did you do? Everybody got 100? All right, I knew you guys were sharp. All right, Alan, uh, the title of the talk today, The Big Bang of U.S. Postcard Clubs. There it is. And I've already told you a little bit about why my title is that. Um, you know, the scientific theory of the Big Bang that created the universe, basically almost from nothing, there was millions and billions of stars created. Well, in 1946, we had a, an explosion of postcard clubs. And we'll show you a little more detail on that in a few minutes. Next. Here is a postcard that was published by the Postcard Collectors Club of America. Never heard of it? Well, most people haven't. Um, this is that National Postcard Club that started up in the 30s and carried over into the 40s and 50s. In 1948, uh, Bob Hendricks, who was the, for the most, um, most of the time, the president and the head editor of the Postcard Club of America, decided to issue a series of postcards. Uh, in the center there, you see the logo that um, symbolized the club. And in that blue stripe, you see dedicated to Deltiology. Now the word Deltiology was actually a new word uh, at, at this time. Um, I read that some fellow in 1945 came up with the word Deltiology. Of course, we all know what that means, right? It's collecting of postcards. Uh, people thought that, hey, postcard collectors needed a, oh, a technical uh, word to describe their hobby. Coin collecting had numismatics. Uh, stamp collecting had philately. So postcard collecting is deltiology. Since this card came out in 1948, it's it's uh, it's interesting to see we're already putting that word to use on postcards. Next. This is the back of that same card. Uh, up in the left corner there, you see a bunch of uh, verbiage encouraging you to join the Postcard Collectors Club of America. You get a lot of a lot of stuff for only one dollar. I'm not going to read through it all, but basically up above there, you see that there's more than 2,600 members in this club. In the top right area, you see 
PCCOA postcard. PCCOA is the abbreviation for the Postcard Collectors Club of America. Now down the center, kind of like the dividing back there, you see a BH publication. BH is the initials for Bob Hendricks, who was the main, main fellow that kept this club going for many years. Now down in the lower left, you see the logo and you see P6. Bob Hendricks numbered his postcards in his series that he did. And the six indicates that this was the sixth card in the series. At the last part of the talk, we're gonna look at, uh, oh, 15 or 20 of these postcards uh, from this series. How many cards are in the series? There are approximately 61. And I can say that because the last card numbered is P61. But there's, there's some little caveats here that we'll talk about as we get into the details of this. Now, the other good news about, about these cards, not that I'm trying to get you guys to collect them, but um, there's since there's only about 60 or 61 of them out there, and the fact that you can still find these cards in a lot of times in the dollar boxes, and um, they're still available. And you know, that logo is the tip off, that circular logo. There were approximately, no, I shouldn't say approximately, according to the records, each card was issued in a quantity of 1,000. As far as I know, there are no reprints. So we have a, a series of cards published in the late 40s and early 50s. By the way, the last card came out in 1953 that were published in quantities of 1,000. So they're not real common, but uh, they are fun to collect and there are some great images on these cards. You can find them out on eBay and in other websites. Um, prices vary from a dollar up to twenty dollars, twenty-five dollars, uh, which brings up the point: Are some of these cards harder to find than others? And the answer is yes, they are. And we'll talk about that a little bit too later on. Now we've talked about the value of postcard clubs and basically why they were formed. We, we noted that our Wichita Postcard Club was organized in the fall of 1977. Let's take a look at a little preview of US postcard clubs. Next. I hope you can see this list all right. Um, this is not... Um, a complete list by any stretch of the imagination, but this is to give you an idea of the timeline of lo local postcard clubs in the, U in the US. Um, 1946 is considered to be the date that these local postcard clubs started, started forming. Uh, the Metropolitan Postcard Club, New York City, then you can see a number of other postcard clubs there uh, coming out in the late 40s and into the early 50s. And then dropping down toward the bottom there, you can see our, our club, Wichita Postcard Club, 1977. A few other postcard club uh, clubs. I used to belong to the Pacific Northwest Postcard Club out of Seattle. I used to belong to the Webfooters Postcard Club out of Portland. And also San Francisco Bay Area Postcard Club in San Francisco because I was living in Montana most of that time that I was collecting postcards. Next. Just about the same as the last slide, but up at the top, we now know that there was a national postcard club that preceded 
all these local postcard clubs. And it actually was in a very encouraging to the formation of local postcard clubs after World War II. So again, one more, one more uh, thing about my title. Uh, you can see that there was this big bang of, of local postcards clubs that started out in 1946. What were the conditions that brought about this big bang? Well, one of them would be the fact that World War II finished in 1945. People were relieved, they were exuberated, they wanted to celebrate, they wanted to have fun. And we know there's, there's a, a collecting group amongst all the population, of which we belong to, the people that have that collecting bug, they wanted to collect. And so it was a ripe time for postcard clubs to form. And the second reason was the National Postcard Club, the Postcard Club of America that already had uh, over 2000 members was encouraging in their newsletters to people to start local postcard clubs. I was very fortunate to uh, meet a, a fellow by the name of Peter Megason. He's uh, from Westport, Massachusetts. Actually, I didn't meet him in person, just uh, over the phone and, and through, uh, through communications, emails and letters. But I found out that Peter um, had some of these postcards that were issued by the, by the Postcard Collectors Club of America. And he also had some newsletters. And I was able to get about 12 newsletters from uh, Peter. And they are great fun to look over. Um, and so we're gonna just show you uh, a few a few of the these newsletters in, a, in just a few minutes. But before we do that, let's just take a look at a few club postcards just to get you in the mood for, for more postcards and those that were issued by the local postcard clubs. Next. You can see this postcard was put out in 1966 by the Metropolitan Postcard Club Collectors Club in New York City. And this is the granddaddy of our, our local postcard clubs, uh, still active today. Next. This is a large letter linen postcard put out by the Southern California Postcard Club, I believe in 1948 is when that club um, was founded. Next. I wanted to show the back of this of this postcard just because it happens to be a postcard that was mailed out by Bob Hendricks. And this is the fellow that was the main man behind the Postcard Collectors Club of America answering somebody's question through one of these postcards. Next. This is a club postcard issued by the Windy City Postcard Club of Chicago, also one of the early postcard clubs. Next. And here's a, a Chrome uh, postcard from the Bay State Postcard Club out of Boston, Massachusetts, that area. Um, that club started out in 1948, next. This, this postcard will hopefully look familiar to, to you. Uh, as you can see there at the bottom, uh, it's a Wichita Postcard Club postcard. Rick Gary is our resident club artist, thank goodness, great artist. Uh, every year, the Wichita Postcard Club uh, puts out three different postcards. All of them are Rick Gary postcards. And one of them is for National Postcard Week, which is 
celebrated in early May. Next. Now this is the show postcard that unfortunately was for a show that didn't happen because of the pandemic. But uh, the, the, theme, the theme of the show is um, real photo postcards and messages capturing history. And we are carrying that theme over uh, and hopefully we'll be able to have our October show this year. And this will be the theme of that show. So I don't know if, if Hal is going to reissue it and the Wichita Postcard Club are gonna reissue a, a show card or not, a new one for 2021. Next. We're, we're still sorting that out, <laughs> Tom. <Okay. laughs> now the third card that uh, members get is a member card. And uh, this was the uh, 2020 member card. So you get three Rick Gary postcard cards every year from the Wichita Postcard Club. At this time, I want to uh, thank a few people that helped uh, me uh, in preparing this talk, I mentioned Peter Megason, and I talked with Susan Lane. I talked with Hal Otway. Um, I I got information from Roy Nunn and Lou Bear, and you know Bill Burton, his the postcard history fellow. Uh, he kind of got me inspired to pick this topic uh, for my talk when he he got a hold of me and was asking me about Bob Hendricks and the Postcard Club of America. So thank you, Bill. Next. On the back of the member card um, are the officers of our, our club. Hey, listen, um, anytime you get a chance to thank these people, please do so. Uh, these are the folks that really put the time in to keep our club going. Um, we don't have Alan's, Alan Milbrandt's name there, but he's, he's, the, uh, he's become our, our, our webmaster. Anyway, you know, you know that any, any good postcard club or any club at all for that matter relies upon those few people to, to really carry the load. Next. This, this uh, is the front cover of a magazine that came out in 1993. Some of you will remember uh, Postcard Collector Magazine. Postcard Collector Magazine and bars were the staples for many years for postcard collectors. Uh, unfortunately, both of them, uh, well, bars is still still going, but not, not in the format that we're, we used to have. Uh, Postcard Collector Magazine uh, ceased uh, a number of years ago. But back in 1993, uh, in addition to their monthly magazines, uh, they would put out an annual. And it was a very nicely produced um, a publication. The reason I'm showing you this particular annual is number one, if you can ever get a copy of this, if you don't have one, um, it's worth having. This, this is one of the, the most uh, informative um, magazines that I've ever, or actually books for that matter, that I've ever come across related to postcards. Next. This is the table of contents for that 1993 annual. And what was done here was uh, they took uh, postcard history by, by 10 year periods. I'm not gonna say decades because it wasn't quite um, arranged by decade. The first uh, uh, 10 year period was 1893 to 1902. That was Bruce Nelson. We got some great writers here. George Miller, George Gibbs, Don Preziosi, of course, the Lennon guy. Um, Jennifer Henderson, oh, this lots of Susan Nicholson, lot, lots, Dave Long did the course, the Chromes. Anyway, I want to zero in on Lou, Lou Bear's article, which covered 1943 to 1952, 
when I read this article, this is what alerted me to the Postcard Club of America, to what Bob Hendricks did for the postcard hobby, and that series of postcards that they put out. Next. This is a page from Lou Bear's article. Um, down at the bottom uh, right there, uh, you can see a couple of pictures of Bob Hendricks. Bob had a short life. He, he had bad health. He was a disabled vet, from what I read. Um, only lived about 44 years, but the last, last half of his life was dedicated to the postcard hobby. At this point, uh, before I go on to show you just a few of the uh, newsletters that uh, the Postcard Collectors Club of America put out, I wanted to just read a little bit, and this is going to be, I hate to say it, dry history, but this is uh, just to shore up for everybody what happened uh, back in the 30s and 40s before all those local postcard clubs started up. And this is from an article written by Peter Megason. The Postcard Collectors Club of America was founded by Albert Wood in Kansas City, Missouri in 1934. In the first issue of the club's publication called the Postcard Gazette, which was issued in 1940, the need for a club was stated thus. We saw the need of a clearinghouse through which collectors of postcards could obtain the names and addresses of other reliable collectors and where they could obtain sets of cards, odd views, and in time establish values for their cards. These objectives are solely being, being realized. It's interesting to note that uh, back in the 30s and 40s, early 40s, when people exchanged cards, uh, it was usually one for one. There wasn't uh, a value uh, delineation like we have today, but the goal was to start to establish values for cards. So continuing with Peter Megason's article, Within a few years, Bob Hendricks of Los Angeles brought the hobby a step forward by initiating a new publication for postcard collectors called Postcard Collectors Magazine. The first issue appeared in December 1943. Like the Gazette, the Postcard Gazette, this publication served as a vehicle for postcard collectors to meet other collectors with whom they could exchange postcards through the mail. By 1946, the publication had over 1,000 subscribers. By 1947, it was necessary to move the Postcard Collectors Club of America from Kansas City to Los Angeles, with Bob Hendricks serving as president and editor. The hobby was growing by leaps and bounds in the years immediately following World War II, and 2,500 copies of the July 1947 Postcard Gazette were distributed. The word Gazette was dropped in, the 19, in 1950 and the, the two publications formed to, to be called the Postcard Collectors Magazine and Gazette. Throughout the 1950s, most American postcard collectors belonged to this club until the club ceased to exist in 1959. Now, I don't really have any information uh, or any of those late newsletters, uh, 1958, 1959, that might have explained more about why the club ceased to exist. But I know I can surmise one reason was that Bob Hendricks was not in good health. He actually died three years later. Um, he was always struggling financially to keep, keep afloat, as you might imagine. But being so dis, uh, dedicated to the hobby, he deserves uh, our recognition. Okay, 
we got two things we're going to do the rest of the way on this talk. Number one, just to give you a heads up, we're going to look at a few of the images of the newsletters that Bob Hendricks put out with the Postcard Collectors Club of America. And then, then at the end, we're going to look at some of those, those postcards that I've been talking about. And you saw one, he's the very first postcard we, we showed today, uh, the dedicated to Deodeology, that striped one. That was one of the cards from this, this postcard series that, that uh, was put out by the Postcard Club of America. Next. This is just a close up of, uh, of that same picture. You get a little, a little better look at Bob Hendricks. On the right there, he's a happy guy. He's, he's got a gavel in his left hand. He's holding, I think, a postcard in his right hand. And he's, you can tell he's happy. Uh, this was at a, a, a Southern California postcard club meeting, I believe. Okay, next. All right, this is the first example of one of the Postcard Collector Club of America's uh, publications or newsletters. That time it was called Postcard Collectors Magazine. This was from 1944. Now think about that, 1944, the war was still going on. And, uh, you know, there, there was a lot of shortages. I, the paper might have been one of them. This is a low, low quality paper. Uh, um, it, it's red in color, just like you see it there, but uh, uh, six pages and next. This was on the second page. There's an editorial there. <clears throat> it's interesting to note that uh, it was a very up, I won't read it to you and it, it, probably it's too small to read, but I, re I read it and it, it was a very upbeat editorial talking about postcard collecting no mention of, of the war. And then down, uh, down at the bottom there was an advertisement that Bob Hendricks had for a Los Angeles postcard exchange, basically offering to exchange postcards or to, to sell postcards. Next. <clears throat> this is from that same uh, newsletter, 1944, just to show you the, the classified ad section. People could put in an ad to uh, offer to buy, sell, or exchange postcards. Next. Okay, this, this one uh, is now, uh, this is the Postcard Gazette. And I think that's 19, 1947 on that one. Anyway, that one uh, is interesting because there's an article um in the in the lower center there and it's what constitutes a postcard club yeah this is july 1947 i'm going to read just a little bit here now we talked about 1947 now it's just the time when postcard clubs the local postcard clubs are starting up and this is this is one of the reasons why because uh the postcard gazette uh the national, this national postcard club was encouraging uh, the formation of local postcard clubs. The first paragraph, do you live in a city of some size and have often wondered why you can't form a local postcard club with regular meetings? There is no reason in the world why it cannot be done. This has already been proved by such well-known clubs as the Cleveland Postcard Club, the Metropolitan Postcard Collectors Club, the Southern California Postcard Club. So the Southern California Club started in 47 then. In the Magnolia chapter in New Orleans, a club can be formed with as few as four or five members, provided the right spirit exists, which is the most important factor in forming a postcard club. Now, there were other articles about forming a postcard club in other editions that I have, but I just wanted to show you the, that uh, the encouragement that was being offered by, by Bob Hendricks through his club. Next. This is uh, the back page of that, that same issue, 1947, July. Just to show you some of the 
some of the advertisements that were were being uh, offered and um I probably can't see this too well, but the middle ad uh, fellow from San Francisco was offering offering cards for sale. And, uh, you know, uh, most of the cards were uh, a penny or two at that time. But there were there were some other ads where they were a little higher priced, but we're getting away from the one for one exchange concept and starting to realize that certain cards had, had more value than other cards. Next. This is a 1953 postcard collector's magazine, again, put out by Bob Hendricks and the Postcard Collectors Club of America. Nice article on Bob Petley. This is typical of, of, of the magazine. Uh, they featured uh, postcard artists, they featured postcard photographers, and they featured a uh, special postcard series. Tuck, Mitchell, um, Detroit Publishing, Union Oil, all those different uh, topics. Next. And this is an example of uh, another article featuring a postcard photographer very famous photographer to us out west, maybe not so well known to the folks back east. Uh, the fellow's name was Burton Frazier. Now, it looks like it would be pronounced Frasher, but it's actually supposed to be Frazier, F-R-A-S-H-E-R-S. -E I believe there's a checklist uh, that has been uh, done fairly recently uh, about uh, Frazier postcards, and I think the number is a thousand or more. Not sure about that, but he was prolific. Real photo postcards. Next. This is uh, a page from that same, same newsletter, 1955. A couple of things about this I wanted to point out. Upper left, checklists now working. One of the things these newsletters did was encourage checklists and they would print the checklist when the person had a, you know, had a pretty good uh, checklist going. And then over on the right, and this is small print, so it's probably harder to see. In fact, I think I got a slightly bigger version of this. Uh, these are the postcards that were in that series that I'm talking about uh, started in 1948 and finished up in 53. Next. Another article on what is a local postcard club. And then over on the other side are a listing of some of the postcard clubs that are have basically become affiliated with, with uh, um, the national, this national postcard club, Postcard Club of America. Not all these these uh, local postcard clubs started out with newsletters right off the bat, and I I believe that the Nash, this Postcard Club of America uh, newsletter uh, carried over, and a lot of the postcard clubs was that was their that was their newsletter for a while. Next, <clears throat> not only did they publish checklists inside the newsletters, but on at least one occasion, they published a separate publication that was a checklist. Mike Roberts was a prominent West Coast uh, publisher of postcards. And so you see here the front cover of a checklist. There were 36 pages in this checklist, uh, cost you $1, but you got the first 1,000 Mike Roberts postcards. Next. This is the inside front cover, a lady by the, by the name of Marie Steiniger. Put in a lot of time to build up this checklist. And down at the very bottom, you see a BH publication that indicates, you know, Bob Hendricks and the Postcard Collectors Club of America was the publisher behind this checklist. Next. Okay, 
it is time to look at postcards the whole rest of the way. No more history lessons, uh, or maybe just uh, uh, just a little bit of history from time to time. This is number one. This is the very first postcard that the Postcard Club of America issued. I really like this postcards because it, it, it featured a, a Billings, Montana lady. She was named the first Miss Postcard. <laughs> now, there, as far as I know, there was not never a second, uh, uh, at least uh, not from what I read or found on other postcards. And I don't know what the criteria was uh, that uh, enabled uh, Mrs. Porndorf to be the winner. It was kind of, looks like kind of a contest. But anyway, uh, would have been fun to meet her uh, living in Montana. But uh, by the time I became aware of her, uh, it, I'm, she was probably passed on. Uh, next. Now down in the bottom left, you see P1. And that's, that's, that's another reason that these postcards are fun to collect because with a couple of exceptions, they are numbered. So you can collect by the number. Uh, I guess up at the top here in the caption, you can kind of get a little more information about Mrs. Porndoff. Mrs. Porndoff Jr. Uh, she's got 40,000 postcards. That was a lot of postcards back then, I would think. Uh, she loved lots of different topics. I'm not gonna read them to you, but anyway, uh, a retired nurse and a government employee in Billings, Montana. Next. Oh, yes, this is, uh, this is the, the list of the postcards. You can think of it as almost a checklist. By the way, uh, if you get it kind of excited about these cards, which I hope some of you will, um, we were, go we're going to provide you with a checklist that you can print uh, at the end of the talk here. I hope you can see, see this. Um, I will try to explain it a little bit. Um, these are the postcards that were published from 1948 to 1953. The first card listed is the P749 uh, uh, Puerto Rico card. So P1 through P6 were either sold out or were for some reason not available. Uh, then you can see um, there's just a few gaps. P8's not available. Uh, P11, and pretty much all the rest of the cards, P31 is not available. Uh, P13 is not available. I think those are the only missing ones. Then down at the bottom, you see P6153. Uh, I haven't mentioned this, but you probably picked this up, uh, a lot of you, that uh, they, the numbering uh, started uh, to include the year. Uh, the, the last two digits of the year. So P, uh, P6153 would mean this was the 61st card in the series and it was published in 1953. So Bob Hendrick sold these cards for five cents a piece. You can see at the bottom there, or you could get six for a quarter or 30 for $1. Oh my gosh. I'll, I'll take that offer. Next. This is P2, Santa Claus card. Hey, you Santa Claus collectors, you got this one? Next. This is the back of that card, P2. I noticed that Bob Hendricks has a secretary and oh my gosh, I'm sure she was busy too. Next. This is an interesting card uh, talking about postcard ethics. Answer all mail as promptly as possible. Be fair with your exchanges. 
trade card for card, value for value. I don't know quite how those two go together, but I think I understand what he's trying to get across. <clears throat> so I'm not going to read the rest of this, but this is a fun card down at the bottom. It says, be proud that you are a Deltiologist. Tell others of your hobby. Next. Now, this is the back of that card. You can see P3 down at the lower left. Bob Hendricks uh, was replying to somebody asking about state flag cards. Next. <coughs> this is P4, Harry Truman. Next. This is P5, an astrological calendar. I don't know how that fit in, but he put that in there. Number next, next. Now this is the card that uh, we showed you at the start of the talk. Uh, this is P6, next. And that's the back of P6. We already talked about that, next. Oh, um, you know, when, when you, you try to really narrow down how many cards there are in a series. Sometimes there's these little wrinkles they throw at you. This is a, I guess I would call it a variation of P6 because of the coloring. Instead of two yellow stripes and one blue stripe, it's two blue stripes and one yellow stripe. So uh, let's go ahead and go next. It has the same exact back, it's P6. Uh, so uh, were there 1,000 of each of these printed or 500 of each of these? I don't know. Next. This is P7, Puerto Rico, uh, uh, the gubernatorial election they had in 1949. See the rectangular uh, square there, or rectangular uh, shape there, the white shape? That is uh, there for a reason. It's there so you can put in the Puerto Rico commemorative stamp that was issued at that time. Uh, these are called maximum, maximum cards. And Bob Hendricks in his series, I think I counted uh, 12 different maximum cards. Next. This is P8. This card is a little harder to find than a lot of the other cards I've found. Uh, next. I wanted to show you the back of this card because this is the first card. Uh, you look at the, at the lower left there the number P-8-49. This is the first card in the series where uh, they included the year, the 49, representing 1949. Next. The song of the postcard. Oh my, I was trying to get my friend Hal Ottaway to sing this for you today, but he felt that uh, he didn't have enough time to learn, learn the notes. So maybe another time we can enlist how to sing this, this song. But this, this is actually uh, from a 1910 uh, uh, image. And it, uh, this happened, of course, during the golden, the golden area era of postcards. Uh, that 1905 19, to 1915 era centered around uh, 1910. Anyway, uh, fun postcard. I don't know what the song sounds like. Uh, uh, maybe uh, we can get somebody, how or somebody to that knows music. I don't. I don't know <laughs> how to read musical notes. Uh, just to see what, what, what it might sound right, like. Next. Oh, this is the back of that card, P949. 
And actually, it says it was the exact reproduction of a postcard. I thought it might have come off a of sheet music, but apparently there was a postcard published in 1908. Um, I've never seen it. Next. Okay, this is uh, the uh, P-10, the Mary Maryland Tercentenary. Uh, wanted to point out one thing here at the lower right, it's hard to see, but Bob Hendricks was a decent artist as well as being a good writer. So he can see his name at the bottom right there. He also did the Puerto Rico card, by the way. Again, another maximum card with a place for a commemorative stamp, 1949. Next. This is a uh, P11, and there was at that time uh, the Long Beach Postcard Club was apparently formed. And uh, wow, what a display! What a display of postcards. Next, back in the 40s, early 50s, late 40s, early 50s, there were hobby shows, and so. Uh, the Long Beach Postcard Club was uh, set up with some of their, their, their displays at this hobby show. Next. This is a P-12, uh, the Grand Army of the Republic, another maximum card and another card that Bob Hendricks um, uh, did the artwork for. Next. P15, I'm going to skip now through uh, into some different cards so we don't take all day showing you cards here, but I want to give you a good taste of these cards. Winston Churchill leaving uh, 10 Downing Street, the Prime Minister of, of Great Britain. Next. Uh, here's a commemorative uh, maximum card for Edgar Allan Poe. Another Bob Hendricks artwork down the lower left. This was a P22. There was, an, there was actually two Edgar Allan Poe postcards in a row that were issued by the Postcard Club of America. I'm just showing you one of them. Next. Will Rogers, killed in an airplane crash in 1935. Our beloved cowboy, humorist, philosopher, uh, next, this is the back of that card. This is P2349. This was the last photo of Will Rogers and Wiley Post before the fatal plane crash. Next, this is uh, P2449. Shows Anne, Anna Jarvis who is the founder of Mother's Day. Next. Showed you the back of this just because it's so poignant. Uh, this lady, uh, Anna Jarvis, lonely spinster who founded Mother's Day and then fought vigorously, but in vain to prevent its commercialization. Died at the age of 84, penniless and blind. It's a sad one. Next. Oh, a second Santa Claus card. I think this is a cool one. Bob Hendricks did the artwork on this. I think the artwork is quite good. Uh, this is a P2849. Next. So uh, there's, two, there's two cards in the series that uh, are related to the Academy Awards. I, I, this series is just so fun to collect. So many different topics are included. This is um, P3450, came out in 1950. Next. And this just shows you the information about who the people were that won the major awards, the major Oscars. 12 o'clock high, I remember that movie, All the King's Men. Next. Boy Scouts covered. This is a P42. 
and here's an example of uh, where someone has put a, a commemorative stamp in the box to show you how that, that should work. Uh, if they were really lucky, they could get a, a good cancel on it too. I don't know if first day covers were possible back then, unless Bob Hendricks was able to publish that card prior to the stamp coming out so that people could have the postcard to go with the stamp and get that first day cancel. Next. Now this card, for some reason, didn't get the normal P40, the, the number. Somebody stamped 42 on this one. It may have been Bob Hendricks. I have seen this card without that stamp. So um, my checklist will note that uh, P42 uh, does not have the normal number on it. Next. This is a, a, a card of uh, Abraham Lincoln. Um, next. This is President Franklin Delano, Delano Roosevelt. This is P59 sitting at his desk. Now, I, I men I'll mention this. This particular card, there are three variations of this card based on color, the coloring of the card. This is the brown, brown tint one. Uh, there is also a black one, black colored and a gray colored. So if you really are anal <laughs> as far as wanting to have every variety of card, uh, you, you would have to find all three of those color variations. Next. This is uh, P60 the Q Quebec conference, P6053. Uh, um, this card is the correct card. When I say that, everything's correct there. That's Mackenzie King, the prime minister of Canada, Franklin D. Roosevelt, our president, and Winston Churchill, the prime minister of Britain. Uh, that's all correct, next. And there's, there's the, the P6053 and the, a little information there. Notice they used a souvenir card back for some reason. Uh, I, may, maybe it's because we required a two cent stamp. I, there, I know there was a period uh, where uh, the, the cost of mailing a postcard went from one cent to two cent. Maybe that was it. I haven't researched that enough. Next. This is known to me and to a few people that collect these cards as the air card, E-R-R-O-R. -R -R. Notice um, that this picture should look familiar. It is, it's uh, Mackenzie King and then Franklin D. Roosevelt and then Churchill. But the uh, caption at the bottom says Casablanca Conference. And the fellow at the left is supposed to be Charles de Gaulle. Well, something happened and uh, the wrong picture, the Quebec conference picture got printed instead of the Casablanca conference. And so this card is an error card. Next. There, there, there's the back. Now notice that it's also P60, so you know, that's messed up too. It should have been a separate number. Anyway, uh, that card uh, was never issued correctly, as far as I know. And so this card is known as the error card. And uh, at one time, Bob Hendricks is quoted as saying that he got rid of these, most of these cards. A few of them got out, but uh, he, you know, they printed 1,000, but he uh, was supposedly able to uh, prevent most of these cards from going into circulation. Well, I don't know if that really happened because I've seen a lot of these error cards uh, over the years. And um, so we'll, I guess we'll never know for sure if he was able to prevent 
some of these cards from going into circulation. Next. This is the last card in the series, uh, the Yalta Conference. Um, now, this one also mystifies me a little bit because the, num the numbering on this one is P6153. And yet this conference is dated 1945. I don't know. Well, I have not researched what the deal is there, but there's something that doesn't quite match. Uh, but anyway, uh, next. Uh, you can see the numbers P6153. Maybe, maybe I, I just don't know. That doesn't make quite a sync up the fact that the, the conference was actually held in 4045. Well, I guess it does. I, I'm I'm having a brain a brain uh, wave here problem, 1940 not 1955 1945 no problem I take it all back everything's clear to me now sorry about that anyway this was the last card this was the last card in the uh, in the series of postcards that Bob Hendricks put out uh, the Postcard Club of America they're great fun to collect and. Uh, there's approximately 61 of them. Uh, I will tell you um, that there are two cards I have never found um, in the series. And those are P13 and P31. Um, my friend, Peter Megason from Massachusetts, he also collects these cards. He has never found P13 or P31. So there's still, there's still research to be done on these cards. Next. This is the last card in my talk. And I don't know for sure if this might be P13, but it could be. Uh, it's a real photo postcard. You can see a date. Uh, there's a lucky card corner uh, little deal there in the lower right of the map. It says May 1949. That's about the time P13 would have would have been issued. Um, the lucky card corner uh, was a, fe a regular feature in Bob Hendricks's um, uh, magazine. He would list 15 people and. If you were one of the lucky 15 to get listed in the lucky card corner, you were. They, he encouraged everybody to send you a postcard. <laughs> so anyway, uh, there's no number on this card. Um, and so it's possible this might be that P13 card. Next. This is the back of that card. And it, you can see it was a real photo. It's got a Kodak back to it. And um, you, could, you could get a copy of the map or you could get, get the postcards. And folks, next, that's all. <laughs> I, I do want to remind you, we're going to put a checklist of these cards out on, uh, on, the, on the chat room for you to uh, be able to print hopefully. And I want to thank you all for having me as your speaker today. And I hope you learned a little bit about postcard club history in the United States. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tom. That was most interesting. Bill, uh, let's go to the questions. Do you have any questions there in the chat room? You have to unmute yourself. Bill, unmute. <laughs> There we are. Uh, no, that's keep yourself muted except for Bill Burton. Okay. There we uh, are. Um, we had a, a uh, not not real questions, but comments. Uh, a couple of uh, things, and I wanted to bring them up. Um, Mary Lund uh, from uh, Great Britain uh, points out that the first uh, local postcard club in in uh, in Britain was in uh, Bradford. Um, but the Postcard Club of Great Britain was started in 1961. So right. thank you, Mary, for that. Um, 
uh, Janice uh, has Googled the 351 West 64th Street in Los Angeles, which is where Bob Hendricks uh, lived, and she said it still exists. It's a well-kept uh, bungalow uh, and the headquarters of the Postcard Collectors Club of America. Um, there is a checklist. Someone, uh, let's see, uh, the Wichita Postcard Club has pointed out that the, the, this is, they've given the address of the, uh, the link for the, uh, car, for the checklist. Um, and that's about it in terms of comments. Um, but we let's see, have... Bill, Bill, I see one that says that, you know, those two Canadian cards at the end, uh, that there's a Canadian back on the, that. And they had the two cent rate in Canada, where in the US we were still one cent, except in World War One. And in World War One we went to two cent during the war to raise money for the war. And then after we got out of the war, the only time in history that uh, Congress dropped the postage rate from two to one cent uh, for postcards. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. That's interesting. But that's what we've got in, in the way of comments, uh, Hal. Wonderful, wonderful, very good. Um, any other comments that anyone would like to give? You can unmute yourself and join in. Hal? Yes. Hal, I'd just like to say something. Okay. Brian? Yeah. Um, Strangely, we've got a collection of American Postcard Club souvenir cards. Really? <laughs> yes. Um, lots of English ones as well, but we've always looked out for American, American ones. We, we've got some quite early ones. Good. Interesting. And it was fascinating to it was fascinating to hear Tom tell the history. Uh, in the US of the phenomenon that's happened in this country also, but over here, it's happened later. Very wow. interesting, much, very much. Morgan, did you want to say something? I just wanted to point out that uh, Tom put out a book called Bozeman in the Gallatin Valley, part of the Postcard History Series publications by uh, Arcadia. Tom, tell us about that book. Hi, Morgan. Oh, um, the uh, Arcadia Publishing, as you well know, is uh, a very prolific publisher of postcard histories. I, I think uh, at this point in time, there's hundreds and hundreds of, of, uh, of these postcard history books. I just happened to write, you know, uh, three of them, uh, including the Bozeman, the Gallatin Valley, and one of my hometown of Helena, Montana, and then one of Glacier Park. My wife did one of Yellowstone Park and one of Olympia, Washington, because she lived in Olympia, Washington for many years. But anyway, yeah, those are Arcadia publishing books are, are amazing because all, all these different local uh, people, collectors of local views had the opportunity to, you know, take their collection and, and put it in book form for to share with other people. So that, that, that was a, that's a neat phenomenon in our literature of postcards. Very oh, much so. I just, I just purchased the one from Bozeman. I didn't know you did others. I'll have to see if I can find them. So well, be your next sure month? that you do. I need all the money, I, all the royalties I can get. <laughs> so when's your next book coming out about Montana cowboys and sod houses and... Uh, the agriculture of Montana. 2075, probably about. <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank you, Morgan. I appreciate that. Hey, the, the, the postcard checklist is now out on the chat room just to let people know that you, there's a link there. If you click on that link in the chat in the chat room, it's you, you it should bring up the uh, the checklist and you can print it off and you can have that checklist if you decide you want to pursue the collecting of the these great cards in this series. I have a question, Tom. Yes. Where, do you, where do you look? Under what topics do you look to find these cards? 
when you go to a show, what topics do you look under to find these cards? You know, I uh, Dolores, Santa because I collect Santa, but yeah, a few dealers I have noticed have a a postcard re category, Related, uh, yeah. and that would probably be the best best place to look. Um, and you know, to be truthful. I've found quite a number of those cards in dollar boxes over the years. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay, thanks. That's interesting. Any other questions or comments? Hal, one more. Is it time to pay the Wichita Club dues? Anytime you can. Yes, usually, you know, where we changed that over a year or so ago and asked for the money at the front of the year. But a lot of times people wait until the show and pay there. We've, we're famous for never dropping anyone. So <laughs> don't worry about it. But if you can send in your dues at some point, okay. we'll up, up your uh, year date on your uh, address label and you'll know that. But uh, thank you for mentioning that, Morgan. And how much is it, Hal? I forget. Fifteen dollars a year for okay. one person. If you have a husband, wife, or a daughter, or somebody, another dollar. So, uh, okay. it's either that's fifteen gotta or best, fifteen. That's got to be the best bargain in postcards. Is fifteen dollars for the membership? Well, that sounds like a, a promoter down there. <laughs> Thank you, Morgan. <laughs> Everybody, send in your money. Yeah, right, right. Tom, I have, I have a question. Are you familiar with post crossing? I am. Dolores, uh, Dolores Swint. Damaris. Uh, Damaris. Yeah, yeah. She's a fine. She's a fine lady. And you know, Alan, that's a good point because I would consider that to be a national or international uh, club. You know. Well, the, the card that you showed about swapping one for one and try to send a card that the person wants that's exactly what post crossing does in a sense you yes. have a you have an online a space to say what you want um i'm a member of the C of the seattle club post crossing post crossing club and we print postcards uh and we have meetings we have virtual meetings now um, Great. but post crossing basically if you're unfamiliar you you go to this website and you at you register and then you ask to draw a name and you get a number uh, and you send that person whose name you drew that you don't know anywhere in the world, you write the number on the postcard. When they receive it, they register it, and then your name and address gets thrown in the hopper. Um, so, um, yeah, uh, Damaris does a post-crossing meetup at the Wichita show at the hotel in the past, um, and we've had meetings at the Phoenix postcard shows as well um, in the side room there have been post-crossing meetups. So it's a little, it's tangential, but not, it also harkens back to a hundred years ago. You'll see the old postcard saying, I got your postal, here's my address. Thank you, yeah. you know, we'll swap. Um, so, uh, you know, that's sort of the precursor to the organized meetings with officers and uh, stuff right. like that is, and it's kind of come full circle now, 120 years later, 110 years later with post crossing. Anyway, we have, we do postcards for those as well. Great, Alan. Thank you very much yeah, for tying you, that together. That that's really interesting. Any other comments by anybody? I'm, now I'm going to give us a teaser for our next month's topic. Well, we have a, uh, I'm sorry. You said for next month, we're set for May 1st. That's our uh, meeting date. We might have May baskets, who knows? But uh, we have our speaker for uh, for May, and I'd rather not say right now, you know, things you don't always know. But uh, uh, we'll have that in the newsletter, won't we? We will. Okay. Comment. I see the present Wichita Post Clark Club roster runs out at the end of 2021. Says Would you like to 21. do the new one? <laughs> so I assume you're starting on the new one for 2022, and everybody ought to be getting their new information into you. Uh, well, we good. would we would ask and will ask for that when we're ready. 
Morgan, uh, Morgan, when we print those, we always print extras. And so we kind of wait until we've used up some of the extras. Uh, but we'll see. Uh, we've had a lot of, um, I'm sorry to say, but just several members have passed away and changes and everything but at probably not this year we'll be considering that but once we get our shows going again and we can uh, ask for updates for people's uh, addresses and everything that's this is a good time to always if you move or if you change a, a, a email address if you go from one you know, to AOL, to Gmail or something, be sure to always send that change to Phil McDaniels because he needs that so you'll get your monthly newsletter. Otherwise, we don't know where you've gone. And if you move physically, send us, send the club, your new mailing address so we can send you your three cards for this year and notices about the show and you know everything that we send through the mail okay anything else now i might like to point out something please ray um i'm going to defer to burton on this one because i'm not quite sure it's still there but at postcardhistory.net if you're scratching your head about how many how many postcard clubs there are in america there is a list of the active clubs at Postcard History. Oh, uh, good. We, we would encourage you to use it if uh, if you're interested in that information. Uh, most of the clubs have contact people. So good. In case you have such such an interest. Oh, that's, that's wonderful list. to know about. That list, by the way, is is curated. Um, I check it every quarter. Um, unfortunately, the numbers go down, not up. Uh, but we also include not only American and Canadian, but also uh, uh, Australian. And we've been working on uh, the, uh, the British clubs. Um, yep. It's a work in progress, but the American clubs are, are curated pretty closely. Very, Thank very you, good. Very good. Okay, anything else from anyone? Great meeting. But... Yeah, very much. Ooh. Thank very you nice. very, very much, uh, Tom Mulvaney and bill and ray being on tap in case we have a change but we really appreciate everyone coming look forward to seeing you may 1st and uh, and thank you and uh, we'll see you next time i hope you bet. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Thanks. thank you all Bye.